so good evening to students hope you are fine at your places now i am coming with you and another video this video is basically the continuation part of the previous video where we have to discuss uh, what is the output equation of a synchronous machine and on which factors this output equation depends now in this video we are try to be understand that after getting the equation in the form of product of diameter and the core length how these two values can be separated each other now before discussing the separation of this d and l first of all as you know in the previous video that we are discussing that in case of a synchronous machine your output equation says it will be equals to q is equals to c not d square l into ns where this c not is equals to 11 bav ac kw into 10 to the power minus 3 and you know that this bav and ac is basically the specific magnetic loading and specific electrical loading whereas this kw is a constant value that is a called as the winding factor its value will be equal to 0.955 so by changing the value of specific magnetic loading as well as specific electrical loading you can change the output of the synchronous machine now what we have to do when you substitute the value of c not that is 11 bav ac kw along with the synchronous speed in this equation you are getting a equation in the form of d square l now from that thing you have to separate this d and l and for the separation of this d and l in case of a synchronous machine you have the two main things that should be kept in mind the separation of d and l is done by the two ways number 1 axial length of the core to the pole pitch and number 2 peripheral speed now it depends upon the machine to machine for example in a salient pole machine whether a rectangular pole or a round pole is used in this type of machine the diameter of the machine is very very large as compared to its length so in that case you are using l by tau to separate this diameter as well as the core length now in order to separate this l and uh, d you have two conditions to be there for example if the synchronous machine is of round pole then this ratio lies between 0.6 to 0.7 that means the ratio of pole arc to the pole pitch may be varied from 0.6 to 0.7 and in some cases this value should be taken as l is equals to tau p that is l upon tau p is equals to 1 whereas in case of rectangular poles the ratio of axial length of the core to the pole pitch is equals to 0.8 to 0.3 now when you have to calculate its main dimension that when you have to calculate its diameter as well as length you have to be given that the machine is a salient pole or a non salient pole so if in the problem it is given the machine is salient pole and also it will be given as the machine is a round pole or a rectangular pole so let us suppose if in a numerical it is not mentioned the machine is a round pole or rectangular pole so in that case you have to be assume the machine is in rectangular pole that means for separation of d and l you have to choose the value 0.8 to 0.3 intermediate value can be chosen by yourself i think it is clear to all of you next using the above relation of d and l however these values are obtained diameter of the machine as well as the st uh, stator core length but let us suppose if in a machine numerical the peripheral speed is given then in that case the separation of d and l cannot be calculated as the previous formula that is l by t tau pi in that case you you can use the formula that is a called as peripheral speed and this peripheral speed is having the certain limiting values that depends upon type to type of the machine for example 
bolted pole construction the peripheral speed should not greater than 50 meter per second dovetail pole position it should be not greater than 80 meter per second so in general you can say that in case of a synchronous machine the peripheral speed should not greater than 30 meter per second now here you have to be remember the two main and the major important things are to be noted down the number one thing is that if in a numerical peripheral speed is given then you can use peripheral speed is equals to not greater than 30 meter per second in order to separate d and l and peripheral speed is given by the formula va is equal to pi d ns where this ns is called as the synchronous speed but in the numerical if the peripheral speed is not given then you can use the formula that is l by tau pi and this l by tau pi is having a value 0 0.8 to 0 0.3 that depends upon your machine to machine you can use any value between 0 0.8 to 0 0.3 turbo alternators these are alternators which have a large speed of the order of uh, 3000 rpm and these type of alternator are basically used in generating stations where we have to generate the electrical power hence the diameter of these machines will be small as compared to the length as such the diameter of rotor is limited so in that case your peripheral speed of the alternator must be below than 175 meter per second so that means if in a numerical it is given you have to design its turbo alternator and in that case you have to separate d and l by the use of peripheral speed so in that case you can use this peripheral speed less than equal to 175 meter per second and this peripheral speed is basically equals to va is equal to pi d ns so you can say that with this you have an idea that how you can separate d and l so on a noter end I conclude that in order to separate D and L, you are using the two main things. Number one, the ratio of length to the actual, actual core length, that is L upon tau P, which value will be equals to 0.8 to 0. Sorry, 0 0.8 to 3. And second, its peripheral speed, that's peripheral speed is equals to VA is equal to pi D NS. That depends upon numerical to numerical. So whatever the data which is given to the numerical based upon that thing you have to design its main dimension i think this video is clear to all of you and it will be must be understood of all of you so before watching this video first of all go to my previous video of the output equation of a synchronous machine once you can get an idea to what do you mean by this output equation on which factor this output equation will depend after that the separation of d and l can be carried out i think this video is clear to all of you. So in the next video, we will meet with your another design that is armature design of synchronous machine. Thank you. Thank you so much.